Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. It is another Epi of League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you. The final episode where we will not have Worlds games to talk about. So let, round of applause. We finally made it, everybody. Pat yourself on the back. Woo. You made it through. It is arguably the longest two-month stretch of the year that you're going to go through without any live action games. You're living off all the rumors, all the tiniest morsels of games, Asian games to go by. Uh-uh. You're going to get the full meal here shortly, but one more little trip and some extra conversation before we get there. And today we're completely ripping off a question that was on the LOL Esports <laughs> Twitter page asking who is the best bot lane at this world championship. And listen, I know initially you're going, well, that's kind of an obvious question. It's ruler and missing because ruler's the best player heading into worlds. Missing was the number one support. And I would say, yes, that is probably the easy answer. And ruler missing... There's no way you can accept any other LPL team because Ruler and Missing beat up on every single one of them. I'm I, you, You're saying that question, and instantly I'm getting flashes, playbacks in my mind of all these 2v4, 2v5 uh. outplays that Ruler has got going for himself all the times that Missing has set things up, set up these miraculous plays for the squad. is just there to hype up and get Ruler into that position where he is popping off. It is incredible thinking about the power of bot lanes that we have, that that is the first thing that flashes into your mind. That's that initial reaction, of course. But I think there is an interesting conversation to be had about this because it is time that you do check in with these duos and check in how they are pumping each other up and where those strengths are. I think there is somewhat of a conversation to at least be had about this topic. There's, there's definitely some, some arm pulling, some convincing that will need to take place to get, you know, Ruler and Missing not in that top spot because it is obvious, but maybe when you're including both the AD carries and the supports, there's an angle where you say, well, maybe there's some mechanical differences with some of the supports from the LCK. There's two other duos we can talk about from Korea, and we start with uh, the comments that were flooded on this tweet from all these sports. <laughs> Most people saying... It's Guma Kiria, duh, obvious. Slight T1 fan bias, obviously, as you come to expect on Twitter. But peak form Kiria, you could maybe start having that conversation. This is not as crazy as it sounds at the outset, knowing how powerful, how good Ruler and Missing have been this year to have someone like Guma and Kiria and understanding their year be in this type of conversation. And I'm not going to need the T1 Truck Brigade to convince me about this one because I think they do have a little bit of an argument, a little bit of a push here when you are considering what type of power, what type of positives Guma and Kiria are going to be stepping into this world championship with. Let's first look at Guma Yushi. I think that this has been a player that a lot of people have looked at the struggles, the trials, tribulations that T1 has gone through this year and looked at his individual play, his level of effort, his level of able to understand what is happening and what the team needs and how he can try and lift it, be that hero for the squad. I think Guma's taken another step forward in that regard in his career this year due to that all that situation, all that uncertainty around T1 without Faker in that lineup. He kind of stood up and, and shown that he can rise himself up to that level, that caliber of a leader for the team with his gameplay alone. And how do we make that better? You slot him in alongside Kyria. And if anything that we are taking away from the Asian games, which there are a couple takeaways, which are going to lead to how we feel about this world's event, Kyria's performance and his form, especially on champions like this Alistar, absolutely something to be considered heading to the world's event. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to cheat, you include the Korean Asian Games bot lane, and that's the easy number one, Ruler <laughs> Kyria, right? Oh, yeah, of course. But ah, we ain't playing by those <laughs> rules for that bot lane, although that is a pretty darn terrifying combo. So biggest thing, Kyria Guma, I, over the year, years, have been the best bot lane in the world, but we're talking current form heading into this world's Guma's been pretty consistent, as you highlighted, even during the slump time for T1. And Kyria leveled up 100% throughout playoffs. But it feels like they're not both fully in that peak form. But they're definitely getting there, could get there at the World Championship and be vying alongside Ruler and Missing for that title of best bot lane duo at Worlds. 
Then the other LCK squad we got to talk about is the duo who's getting pentakills against Guma Kyria and then Mr. Alistair player who's finding Guma throughout the chaos of a team fight time and time again on Alistair. How about pays and delight, Mark? I can't believe the disrespect going around, not paying the type of respect and attention to this bot lane that is going on right now in this conversation. Because yes, you can throw in all the T1 fans talking about Guma and Kyria. Who is the guy stepping up and thrashing Goom and Kyria when all the chips are on the table, when it mattered the most? Pays doubling down, taking the aggressive picks and making it work for his squad. Yes, Pays and Delight. I I've been a me mega fan of them this year and, and talking about the positives that they have brought to the table. You look at Guma and Kira, and you want to talk about them maybe not being at that tippity top ultra potential that we know that these players are that type of caliber. Pays and Delight are at that peak right now. They are operating at a phenomenal level. And really, I don't think we've seen them fully peak just yet and how dominant, how powerful this bot lane can be heading towards this event. I think one of the things that is interesting to note when you're looking at all of these ones that we are now talking about is looking at someone like Kyria and acknowledging that yes he has that creativity that you know unbelievable just complete champion pool that is there that if something happens in the meta some type of counter all these type of things I'd be looking at him as the one to be a game changer be something different in this type of regard that can shake up the dynamics that we are already setting and talking about for these bot lanes but then you look at Pays and Delight and again if you're going for current form I think they're the only ones that you can say hold a candle can be in this conversation for this battle for the best bot lane with ruler and missing from the LPL. Yeah, and I think we really don't know what that ceiling is for them because they've answered every question that they could in the LCK. And I know people are going to call it LCK fandom to be saying, did you see what happened at MSI? How are these Korean bot lanes going to match up against JDG, BLG, LNG? But I don't think there's any question that you think the LCK is at a higher level in summer than we saw out of them in spring. And I think that there is a little bit to be taken into account when you're talking about pays and delight and just, you know, how new this is going to be as an experience for them with the added pressure and everything else attention that Worlds brings, even on a different level than MSI, on a different level than trying to go back to back to back championships in the LCK. All incredibly impressive things and high levels of pressure. But again, it is still one of these ones where it is that next level up and how do you respond to it? I think it is understandable to look and maybe say there could be some struggles for Pays and Delight to find their footing. Now, should they be able to find that footing and then put together the type of results and performance that we have seen this year? I don't have any doubts about that. When you're looking at them, you look at the history of a player like Pays that when it the, you know, the pressure ramps up when it is all about can you deliver, can you be this guy that fills in for this championship quality team as that replacement for arguably the best bot laner in the world. Pays has been able to do that time and time again this year. He has doubled down and delivered for the Gen G faithful, delivered for the LCK as a region. I can't wait till we get more of these mega showdowns at Worlds where he gets these opportunities. And you know what? So far, he's 100% on every opportunity he's cashing them in. I, again, I feel like we're not talking enough about a guy in his rookie split winning back-to-back -back LCK titles. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And... The one thing you could maybe say is, okay, well, what's going to be meta at this world? So what's going to be in the bot lane? Maybe that will influence who you think is going to be the best bot lane at the event. But the problem is, throughout all of his career, has there ever been a pick for Ruler that you've been like, man, he struggles on this? Because even a guy like Uzi, there were times in his career he said, he doesn't really play Kalista. He doesn't really play Draven. These meta picks at the time, he didn't really thrive on. I have never said that about Ruler. You will never say that about Ruler because of that champion pool, because of that proficiency he has on all of these things and where he knows how to fill in and provide that role, that strength that this champion is going to bring to the composition and how it's going to work around him. He is excellent on capitalizing on that type of uh, characteristics of the champions of the composition. You look at what has been the strong bot lane picks this year, what we have rolled through, the Zeri, Aphelios, Kai'Sa, Zaya, these premier picks, of course, throw Jinx early into the year, Nami, Lucian, all these type of ones. R Rulers in your top two, not even top three, it's top two that you would be talking about throughout the year on all these picks. He has been phenomenal. My man, of course, you want to dial up the Zaya, dial up the world championship skin on that Zaya for your boy, Ruler.
Yeah, and he's looking to add another world championship skin to some of these AD carries. We've done our best to make a case for Gen G and T1's bot lane, but it's ruler miss. They're the best bot lane heading into this world until someone dethrones them at this event, which seems unlikely, but could happen. It's, it's it, it can happen, absolutely, but to me, it is that ruler and missing slam dunk. It's that alley-oop, Dwayne Wade to LeBron James, slam it down for the cameras, folks. That's exactly what ruler and missing are going to be looking to do the competition at this event. I do I really like this conversation, though, because I think it is one that does have to have that conversation, where we do get to talk about, examine the pros, the cons of all these other type of ones, and knowing, you know what? You watch any three of these bot lanes, you are guaranteed to see some high quality League of Legends, some thrilling stuff happening out on Summoner's Rift. The absolute beauty of not just the bot lane for JDG, but the team as a whole being such huge favorites at this event is you're either getting the most dominant year in the history of League of Legends if they complete Golden Year and win the whole thing, or you're probably getting one of the biggest upsets of all time with whoever's able to take down JDG. So it's win-win. Yeah, you know what? I think we've had a couple situations that have come close to this type of a level of prestige that would be achieved completing the golden run. And I mean, this is really the most golden of golden runs possible for a couple of these guys on the squad of JDG, really talking about Ruler and Kanavi, the, the championships that they've racked up, of course, the titles, and then adding in the gold medal of the Asian Games. You drop in a world championship on that? I don't think it's possible to get more victories, more accomplishments in a single year. And that's what's going to make this world so until exciting. Until we add in our League of Legends World Cup. You wait for that one. We're mm, getting it. And Rift Rivals comes back. You'd say, ah, yeah, but JDG <laughs> never won Rift Rivals? Uh, yeah, they've never won NA versus LPL Rift Rivals. Oh, how about that? <laughs> that would not be something to watch. That would just be a scary time. But uh, that is it today for League Unlocked. Next time we're doing a video. We're going to be talking about Worlds games, so God bless. The wait is over. Thank you all, you beautiful people, for watching and waiting, and we will catch you on that flippity floor.